Hello and welcome to this video on common MMI stations. My name's Dr. Hilton and I'm a medicine interview panelist. So we're gonna go through a situation, a real scenario that universities use, and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can score full marks. So this is a breaking bad news scenario. And typically when people are interviewing for prospective medical students, it's going to be one of three situations. The first is something that you have broken or lost that is irreplaceable. That could be anything from a valuable item to a pet. The second is a mistake that you've made and finally it's a difficult conversation so maybe for example an old person who's no longer able to drive because they're not functioning well enough to be able to drive safely and you have to have that difficult conversation with them so what we're going to do now is look at a live session of someone doing a mock breaking bad news station and I'm going to critique it as we go along showing what they did well and areas that they could improve then at the end I'm going to show you all the key skills that examiners want to see when they're examining students taking these kind of scenarios areas and exactly how you can score top marks in all of those areas. So I'm going to put the scenario on screen now. Take a pause, take a moment to familiarize yourself with it and how you would go about tackling a situation like this and then we'll dive in with the real scenario. Hey Tanya, how you doing? Hi, how's it going Annie? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How's, how have you been doing? What have you been up to? Yeah, good. I uh, had a nice weekend. It was really relaxed. I just, uh, I mean, I couldn't really go anywhere at the moment, but I just watched yeah. <laughs> as much Netflix as I physically could. And um, nice. yeah, I just completed all of The Queen's Gambit. It was really good. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. I'm actually start watching it now. Yeah. Oh, you should watch it. It's it's really, really good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I do have some bad news for you, unfortunately, though. So here we started with a nice introduction. It's important to match the level of your familiarity to the context of the situation. So here you're friends with the person, you know them well, so you can chat to them like a friend. But what's really important is if you're in a formal situation and you don't know the person, it's always important to introduce yourself first and make sure that you're speaking to the right person and get their consent to do so. The only critique that I would make of this introduction is that she does start very cheery. And actually when you start start quite high and good energy like that, it's quite difficult to lower yourself down to the level of energy that you need when you're going to deliver something upsetting to the other person. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I do have some bad news for you, unfortunately, though. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's about the ring you gave me. Right. Yeah, so you know I went to the wedding. I went to the wedding, um, my cousin's wedding recently and... So what they've done here is not let me go on too much with the preamble. This was me on purpose as the actor trying to be a bit difficult by talking about random stuff, about TV shows and all that sort of stuff. And it's important that the candidate at some point at the first opportunity interrupts and gets in there with their warning shot. And later in the video, we're going to talk about what constitutes a very good warning shot. I know that you said you were really reluctant to give me the ring, but I don't know how it happened, but I've seen to, I've lost the ring. You, you've lost it? Yeah, I, I can't misplace it. I'm not, I don't know where it is. And I'm you've really, lost really it. How could you lose it? You told me that you'd be careful with it. Okay, so the delivery of the bad news is good here. It's very clear and she very concisely says, I'm very sorry, but I've lost the ring. The important thing that happens after, we'll talk about later what one of the three responses that the actor is going to give, but this actor gives silence at first. And it's really important to embrace that silence and she does that quite well by not saying anything, not jumping in with saying something stupid and making it worse. Just give the actor some space to digest what's going on and time to take it on board. You told me that you'd be careful with it. Yeah, I know, I, I really apologize. It's really my mistake, but I, honestly, I've. When I was at the wedding, I tried to find it. I had other people help me as well, but I looked everywhere and I just can't find it. I'm so sorry. I told you, especially, I told you that this was my grandma's ring. She's dead. Betty, she's not even here anymore. That's the yeah. only thing I had to remember her by. I, I mean, oh, I knew I shouldn't have lent you that. <sighs> yeah, I'm so sorry. I know it's, I, I literally acknowledge that it's something that can't be replaced. And all I can do is apologize because I can see how upset you are right now. And I'm honestly, I'm really sorry. So the next thing that the actor exhibits here is a angry outburst. And this is very common at Breaking Bad News stations. And what the candidate does really well here is to not rise to it. She 
acknowledges that the person is angry and also kind of emphasizes that she's really sorry and she understands just how important the ring is to that person. So it's important to stay calm. They usually have a lot of questions as well and you just need to answer them calmly in the best way that you can. Do, do you think so stolen it or? Maybe, but we did try to look for it and I've looked everywhere for it. I am so sorry, Tanya. I, I can't believe that. It's, I, it's, it's not even like I can get another one of it. It's, I think it's been in the family for generations. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I know it's, I, I literally acknowledge that it's something that can't be replaced and all I can do is apologize because I can see how upset you are right now. And I'm honestly, I'm really sorry. So here is a great demonstration of empathy. I acknowledge how upset you must be. I, I can't, I'm so sorry. And just generally showing that she is really remorseful about what happened and she regrets it and didn't mean it to happen. I mean, have, have we even contacted the venue? Could we, could we do that? Yeah, we could do that for sure. At, when we were there, um, I had people around the tables looking under the table saw me, but we could contact the venue and I can see if they've seen the wedding ring or I, or I can contact the bride and the groom and see if they can ask the people that they invited if anyone's picked up the wedding ring. I'll be happy to do that for you. If I hear anything from anyone, I will call you and I'll come give you the ring as soon as possible. But once again, I'm so, so sorry. And as you can see, then the student rounds off the scenario with a reasonable action plan for how they're going to go forward. So now let's look at the general concepts that you need to understand for Breaking Bad News Stations. Then we're going to look at the four key skills that you need to demonstrate. And at the end, I'm going to show you some really important do's and don'ts for scoring top marks in the Breaking Bad News Stations of the MMIs. The first thing to know is that there is no magic solution. These are purposely designed stations that there is no right answer. There's no way to get out of it. And there's no magic bullet that's going to suddenly make everything okay. They want to see how you deal with these tricky scenarios. One of the key things that's going to contribute to your success in this station is using that minute of preparation at the start to orientate yourself to the context of the scenario. I'll talk in a moment of a few things that you should do during that minute to maximize your chances of getting full marks in a station like this. The warning shot is a very important part of this scenario because it tells the person that bad news is coming. It needs to be concise, clear, to the point, and then as soon as you deliver it, it just needs to move swiftly into you actually breaking the bad news. Something really simple like, I'm really sorry, but I have some bad news. Then you can do even a second one that kind of transitions you into the bad news, but it's really important to deliver that warning shot as early as possible and at the first chance that you get to make sure that you can start delivering the news. Then when you get on to delivering the bad news, there are four key skills that examiners want to see you perform well. Firstly, of course, course they want to see good communication. So non-verbally with good body language and eye contact and if it's online good looking down the barrel of the lens to make it feel like eye contact on the other side. And then of course there's the verbal communication. So how quickly you get into delivering the bad news, how and the words that you use to deliver it. So making sure that it's clear, concise, and most importantly, avoiding any confusion. So for example, it would be, I'm really sorry, but your dog Bertie has been hit by a car and they've died. Or I'm really sorry, but your dog Bertie has been hit by a car. They're alive, but they've got a broken leg. Just be very direct, avoid any confusion or any questions as to what exactly has happened. And then the final part of communication is the words that you use. Do you accept responsibility when it is your fault? And do you use words that reflect that? The second skill they want to see is empathy. And this is all about how you acknowledge how the other person is feeling. Just a real empathetic sentence like, I can't imagine how you must be feeling right now, or this must be so terrible for you, I'm so sorry. Sentences like this show that you can put yourself in their shoes and at least try to understand or realize that you can't possibly understand what they're going through. The third skill they want to see is you showing honesty and integrity by admitting fault. And that's very simply just how you own up to the mistake. And then the final skill they want to see is how you manage an emotional outburst. Once you've delivered the bad news, one of three things is going to happen. They'll either get silent, angry or sad. If they get angry, stay calm. As I said, acknowledge that they're angry and just let them say exactly what they want to say without interrupting them and eventually they'll come down to your level. Same if they're sad, just a sentence to acknowledge that. I can't imagine how you must be feeling right now. That is a great stock sentence to have ready for most Breaking Bad scenarios. And finally, if it goes silent, just make sure you embrace the silence. There's nothing worse than someone who's trying to fill the silence with nonsense when all they want to do is just take a moment to let the news sink in. They might follow up with lots of questions, so of course just answer them the best that you can. The way to then round off the scenario is to come up with an agreeable plan that both you can do. 
Now this is something reasonable. Remember that it's something that you can't usually fix. So it's just taking some steps to address the situation. It could be going to look for something, trying to help in some way. It could even be as simple as going to contact someone for them that they want to tell. So maybe their parents or, or a sister or brother or something like that. So let's finish off with some important do's and don'ts for breaking bad news stations. The first do is to really maximize that one minute that you have at the start to orientate yourself with the scenario. Get an understanding of the context, so what level you want to pitch it at. Is it a friend? Is it a stranger you need to introduce yourself to? Is it an elderly person that you need to be more polite to? Just that will help pitch the level of how you communicate with them. Remember if it's someone that you don't know to introduce yourself and get their consent to have the conversation. In that first minute you also want to remember all the key names. So if it's a dog that's unwell who's died, remember the dog's name, remember the person's name, because these are all things that you need to show to demonstrate empathy. Imagine if you're in that person's shoes and something terrible has happened and they got the name wrong of the dog, you would feel even worse and you get really angry at that. So make sure that you don't make any mistakes like that by remembering all the important people in the scenario. Another big do is to deliver your warning shot as early as possible. As soon as you get an opportunity, you just need to say, I'm sorry, but I have some bad news. Then once you've delivered your warning shot, be as succinct as possible with your delivery of the bad news, maybe something you might want to practice how you deliver in that first minute before you start the scenario, but just go straight in and use all the communication skills that we discussed above to deliver in the best way possible. And the final do is make sure that you admit fault when it's justified. One of the big don'ts is to not fabricate facts. What people tend to want to do is to kind of think of reasons why they're not at fault. Remember, this is something that you can't fix and it's something that they want to see how you handle a difficult or a really impossible situation with no solution. Another big don't is when they inevitably have an outburst, don't rise to it. Just stay as calm as possible, don't interrupt them, let them finish and they'll come down to your level. And the final don't is that Although this is fake and we all know that it's not a real scenario, don't act as if it is. Just pretend and act as much as you can and do what you would do if this was a real scenario. Not only will it get you better marks, but it will put you in the situation and help you think of exactly how you would talk if this were to happen in real life and that will reflect in the mark that you get. If you'd like some more help with your medicine interviews, I've made a playlist here of all the 12 areas that are tested at medical school interviews and how to score highly in them. So thanks for watching this video and I'll hopefully see you over in one of those videos.